So cast your mind back to the beginning of chapter one, where we talked about the cell theory, which is one of the theories that underlines all of biology. And recall that the cell theory states that all cells arose from other cells. And so if we have one yeast cell and that one yeast cell gives rise to two yeast cells that have the same genes, that have the same genetic makeup, we call this process mitosis. And it's this process of mitosis that allows organisms like you and I to grow, and it allows uh, single-celled organisms like our friend the yeast cell here to reproduce. But that same genes part is important because if the daughter cells have the same genetic makeup as the mother cell, then that means that these cells have the same DNA. And so the cells in your body and in mine are organized into linear pieces of DNA called chromosomes. It's a single long double helix. You and I have 46. Our friend the yeast cell here has 16. And if the daughter cells have the same DNA as the mother cell, then that means that DNA must have been copied somehow. So let's draw ourselves a piece of one of these chromosomes. At some point, that piece of DNA got copied. And then right before um, right before the cells divide, then those two copies kind of condense into a structure that looks kind of like this. And this is probably the structure that you think of when you hear the word chromosome. And certainly it is. However, this is also a chromosome. This is also a chromosome. Right, the word chromosome just refers to uh, re re refers to a single kind of a, a unit of genetics where all of the genes are attached to each other. One additional little point of um, point of terminology, though, is that after the DNA gets copied, either in this step or in this step, each of those copies is called a chromatid, right? So there aren't any chromatids, there aren't any sister pieces of DNA until the original chromosome gets copied. However, we don't generally think of kind of the cell's life cycle, if you will, in terms of pictures like this. Instead, we generally draw it as a circle. Right, and so this is a, a diagram of the cell cycle. There's one part of the cell cycle called M phase. And M phase is where mitosis happens. This is where the one cell becomes two cells. And then there are, uh, there are three additional phases. There's an S phase, S is for synthesis, and in the S phase, the DNA is actually being copied. And so if we zip back over to this picture, um, the, the transition from one copy to two copies, this is happening during S phase. And then finally, M phase and S phase are divided by two additional phases. This one is called G1. G stands for gap, right? It's the time in the cell cycle when the DNA is not dividing, but the cell, I mean, sorry, the DNA is not copying, but the cell is not dividing. And there's a final phase over here called G2, which is another gap phase. And it's in these gap phases that the cell is actually physically growing. Um, and so things like, uh, so the, like the physical si size of the cell is growing. We're making new organelles. 
Like more or less the cell is getting ready to divide to make sure that once the cell divides, each of the daughter cells has all of the organelles and all of the other cellular structures that it's going to need to continue being a cell, to continue living. And so now that we've kind of, kind of gotten the 10,000 foot view from M phase where the cell is actually dividing, G1 phase is a quiescent phase, a gap phase, the S phase where the DNA is being copied, and G2 where the cell is, where the, another quiescent phase where the cell is growing and getting ready to divide. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at M phase. Um, and we'll see just how it is that each daughter cell ends up with a complete copy of the mother cell's DNA.